Uh, so before I came onto the show over the weekend, I got murdered mm -hmm. online okay. by Mr. Shock and Amelg. So uh, you didn't have to do me like that, but you decided to. I'm on to you now. It's confirmed, Mr. Shock. She's on to both of you. I understand. Shit, Amel, she's on to us. What are we gonna do? We need to leave. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Shock. We've still got dirt on her. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode two of The Match Fix. I'm Shock, the hunk of a host and liked by fans the most. And I'm joined by the Twitch Kuma, and in my opinion, should have retired sooner, Amel. <laughs> I'm Shock. Kicking things off, we've had some interesting developments from Peace once again, forfeiting all three of their games. Now, LCO have tweeted that Peace's roster will be, I think they said it's locked or it's in for next week. Peace, unfortunately, still unable to feel the roster going into this week. So it looks like we're not going to be seeing what Peace can bring to the table yet on the LCO, not until next week, Rusty. They said something that made me think they're playing next Smells week. Smells like cap to me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think they might be bugging. Like on the GCD, I think they still only have two players. And one of which I think tweeted his perma band account. Maybe we can get a screenshot up for that. I think that's so funny, man. He just self reports, but yeah. Anyway, is he even like allowed to play if he's been? I'm not sure. I feel like you're not allowed. Yeah. Because like normally you get like suspended for a split if you go like chat restricted or something, right? Yeah. So I think getting perma band should have some kind of ramifications. But you know, it's the wild west out here in OCE. So who knows these days? You take who you can get. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what will happen though. Like, if Peace just missed the entire round robin, like, does OC just, does it just become like a seven team league? Yeah. Well, I feel like at this point, they've missed so many games that, like, in the interest of, like, competitive integrity, it's better if they just skip the whole round robin. Just because, like, this coming week, they're playing up against both Chiefs and Diewolves. So th those two matches are probably, like, probably, like, the two most important matches mm. in terms of, like, the seeding, since they're both, like, at the top of the table. Um, and whether or not they take a win off them can change a lot. I almost feel like if you don't play a single game in the round robin, even if like you would normally be seated in anyway, I feel like you're just not allowed to play. I yeah. don't know. Because like if that were the case, then teams could literally stay boot camping in Korea for like a couple <laughs> extra weeks, just <laughs> skip the first two and it's fine. Like what does the seeding matter if you're yeah. the best team by then? So yeah, I feel like Riot kind of, or not Riot, like LCO has to kind of take a some sort of stance on Something. this and... I think it should just be, if Peace don't play next week, just, yeah, Bob's your dad's brother. See you later. But our important matches this week, or our exciting matches this week, the first one, chronologically, as Amelg has said so importantly, I believe is like Chiefs Trump. versus Direwolves. Was that the first one? Yes. Okay, well, what, what do you think? I think we were both surprised by that, right? I think we both predicted Chiefs to win. Yeah, uh, I actually week. think, like, word for word, you said there is no way Direwolves can beat Chiefs. I think that's what you said. Uh, I'm I sure we can get that. a fact check yeah, on that. Someone... I think if there's a place for Direwolves to win... Nah, there isn't one. Chiefs are going to win. <laughs> it was a weird game. I feel like Chiefs were sort of in the driver's seat for most of it. Um, but then they had Poltron with the Miracle Baron steal and that kind of swung it around quite heavily. Look at Zaranus as well here. They're, They're in the pit. This one they stole it. Stolen. Poltron's taking the Baron. And ultimately, Dial's running away with the win. I guess just, just what can happen in the best of one. I remember at the end, like the way the game finished was like a Cassante, Akali or Cassante, someone like 2v5. Oh, like the, the champ goes so crazy. Disgusting. Yeah, I feel like giving Cassante is just, I don't know, that champ is so sickening. And uh, you kind of had to give Zaranus MVP, I feel like, for that last team fight. But I also feel like Poltron, like, carried the entire game up until that point. He got the like level three mid gank, they got the kill onto Yorin, and then he also got a successful bot gank. I think they killed Caitlyn and he stole the Baron. So like that was a pretty insane effort. And honestly, if I was Poltron, I'd feel a bit robbed because you, you know. That's true, yeah. You, you're like the only reason <laughs> your team is like still there. Well, not the only reason, like they were doing fine. Mm. Poltron was definitely the, the main kind of driving force bringing them there. I do think the Yorin pick was sort of random. I think it was like blind pick four or five Yorin. Which is, yeah, I don't know. Kaze definitely has like a melee champs fetish, which I don't even think is like necessarily bad because I, I think one thing that I'm really a fan of is just like straight up just playing what you're good at. Because if you look at a lot of like the world champion mid laners, like Zeka, like insane at melee champs, right? Um, you go back, like Doinby kind of like revolutionized the game with his roaming. You go back further, you've got like Rookie playing like the lane dominant stuff. So I feel like at some point, obviously the meta matters and you can't like completely ignore it, but kind of leaning into your style, I think is is fine. But I do think Blind Pick Yon is sort of 
not that impactful in my opinion. At least, yeah, I'm not sure what else you would go for there, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. I guess that's like somewhat the Kizay tax on blue side. Like he's really good at counter picking, maybe not the best at blind picking. He still made a pretty insane play though. I can't remember when it was. Jumps in, it's the flash away from Kizay. Oh, flash denied! TP's coming in too, Bice says, I'm here to help you, mate. Oh, he's alive. Oh, the teammate, Kizay's still alive! The shield by Valley. Messy game overall. I still think if this were a best of five that I'd probably favor Chiefs. Yeah. But Diwolves have kind of come out the gate swinging. Yeah, they're 5-0, sure. right? Like they're doing pretty damn well. Most people were expecting the sort of like um, the bot side, like the PGG trio to be sort of the stars. But I think, yeah, as you said, Zoran has a Poltron really proving their worth, like showing that they have what it takes to be on this team as well. Um, and yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see them face off next week. And he is gone. He is completely gone. He's joined the Diwolves. Next up on the topping block, we had Mammoth versus Kanga. And again, another upset victory. Uh, this time Mammoth taking out a dub to the to the shock of many. For some background context, for whatever reason, I don't remember what it was, but Mammoth actually lost their last two bands as well. So they were already at a disadvantage. But mm. for some reason, they came out on top with pretty favorable matchups and a sort of like clear win condition. Like they had the Draven um, bot lane uh, who they could pretty much just funnel all their resources into and get ahead because uh, Kanga drafted pretty much three losing lanes that really just had no chance of surviving on their own. Um, so what happened is that Voice just abused the hell out of Hooper, you know, <laughs> and got Caitlyn behind, and then when Caitlyn's behind, she doesn't do anything anymore. Um, and yeah, I think that Kanga have sort of made this mistake already in previous games where they're sort of all inning on scaling and then losing in the first five minutes. And I'm not really sure why they keep doing it. Yeah, I think they're they're definitely in a bit of a, a bit of a pickle, a conundrum, some might say. I think that teams have conundrum. really realized that in the current meta, that like early game is is reasonably important right now. It's hard just to like AFK scale completely. And a big reason for that is the fact that because there are so many range supports, like bot lane is very volatile. And so whoever has like you know early jungle um, and early mid priority can can affect bot lane. The Draven now two and oh. Only five minutes in. With Fighter's champion pool, he really can't facilitate that, especially because teams are just now three banning him in the first phase. I just think with target bans, it can like mean one of two things. One, it means they respect you so much that if you get those champions, they know they can't win. Or two, you can't play any other champions. So if they take <laughs> them out, you can't win basically, right? So it could be a compliment or it could be that they think you suck kind of thing, right? Um, but yeah, in Fighter's case, they just like ban out a lot of mids. And this actually happened in, I think, the game the day after of where it was versus Direwolves. And they ended up in kind of like that same sort of situation where you end up on the scaling mid. In this case, it was the Kassadin and you just have like side lanes that kind of need attention or at least need to kind of be just like stabilized almost. Yeah, like have something. Out. Yeah. And instead, it's just like, yeah, the lanes are getting run over. Like, Dajung has perma priority, bot lane's getting like solo kills at level two, and then like diving later on. And is it Cassidy's fault that he can't do anything? Like, no, it's definitely not, right? But at the same time, it like Fighter is a big part of this team. And I think the way they're drafting, they, they definitely need him to be like a stronger early yeah. force than he is right now. Or they need to just like completely change how their side lanes want to play. But I don't really think that's the right thing to do. Like, they have. Two bot lanes, or sorry, two side lanes I think would like to play aggressive. Like Blue is kind of known for carries, right? And I always feel like Hooper is quite an aggressive player. And, I, you know, I think Hooper is kind of an inting, but it's hard to say, like, is that just, you know, stage nerves? Is it just, like, the, the comps are just, like, fucked for him and there's, like, nothing? There has been some it? weird level one shit. You yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm not sure how much I should kind of go in on him because he was fine on order. In fact, I think he was good on order, so... Yeah, ultimately, it ended up Mammoth just kind of stomping them, and it actually wasn't that close, even with Cassidy picking up a couple kills. Like, he wasn't even doing that bad. It's just that, like, by the time he can actually do something, yeah. he, his team isn't in a position to help him anymore. It's yeah, just... that is one mistake a lot of people make. Like, that Cassidy hits 16, and they think the game's over. Yeah. But, like, if you're down 5, 10k, I, I remember it was like when Mammoth is sieging the Nexus, Cassidy has, like, a 1v5 base defense that he wants to go for. He just, like, ults in and, like, instantly <laughs> dies. So, so it's like, you know. And he's just dead, put to sleep, put to rest. Mammoth, they pick up the win and pretty impressive. I think we we both put Mammoth 8 as far as I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but I did say, a little caveat, that I thought their roster had improved and we're seeing the fruits of that. Mm, yeah, on the other hand, not too great from Kanga, I think... A lot of people have expected more from them, and it seems like they haven't really been able to find their footing so far. 
Uh, to be fair, it is obviously a very short split, right? We're in the third and final week coming up of the regular <laughs> of, of the, split. Of the regular split. Yeah. So it is an interesting circumstance to be in. Um, but yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe the maybe like the upcoming patch that we're playing on next week will bring some changes to their draft strategy. Mm. I hope it does because it really just seems like whatever they're doing now is not working. It's not really setting up any of their players to succeed. Now, last game, PGG versus Chiefs. I think everyone thought this would be match of the week. You know, maybe it's not because of Dai was beating Chiefs, but you know, this was the one everyone's looking forward to. This is the top two teams going up against each other, and I do believe if anyone you know watches the match fix at home nah. that I predicted Chiefs to win and, and they did <laughs> and you who did you predict again I think um I think don't, it don't remember been, I could have been PGG uh, could it could have been anyone yeah really. it could have been anyone that's right uh, but anyway it happens now I have to tell a quick story here I actually I was trying to diversify my investment so what I did is I voted for Chiefs on the match fix and I all in my channel points on PGG <laughs> so you know oh, so you win one way or the other yes exactly <laughs> but it does mean that all my channel points are now gone <laughs> What happens. Yeah. Okay, so the draft. I mean, the draft was really interesting. We had a Caitlin support and kind of just the like full early game comp pretty much coming out from PG, which I like for them. Yeah. But I'm not sure I like Caitlin support. What what, what are your thoughts on Caitlin support? I was I was excited seeing it in draft. I really don't like have a good read on what Caitlin support really does. Like we kind of talked about it a bit um before, but it's like she has a very strong lane. With Hail Blades, sure. Um, but then like past lane, it's kind of unclear what she does. Like I mm. theorize that maybe it's due to her being able to like control areas with the traps. Mm. I don't really know. Yeah, I'm not totally sure either. I feel like she has decent poke and she can go Umbral Glaive. And Umbral Glaive is pretty strong right now. So maybe like once you get ahead, it's easy to stay ahead because you can just like take out all their wards. But honestly... I think I'd still prefer other champs, but yeah. it could definitely be very hindsight bias, right? Like this is a 0-6 or 0-7 Caitlyn support. So obviously any <laughs> champ at 0-7 is not going to do a whole lot. Yeah, um, there's been a lot of anti Caitlyns actually. I'm just I'm so about yeah. that. Caitlyn's not doing too hot. Anyway, hmm. continue. On one hand, I admire PGG for, for like giving this a go yeah. because it's clearly like a high execution comp, but they're high execution players. Like I think they should be able to run comps like this if they want. On the other hand, it's really just very unforgiving. Like they don't have a lot of CC. They are really, really reliant on winning bot lane and they're going to really struggle killing Sejuani. And then I think, you know, you can talk a lot about the draft, but then what actually happened in the game, there was like tons of crazy stuff that happened in the game. So the first thing is that, Okay, they tried this like level three bot dive and they don't have any CC for it because, well, yeah, I guess like the only thing would be like a Kate trap, but it's pretty hard, right? You'd have to like Kate trap their tower. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be very good. Now, they did actually manage to get Byer's TP, but they disengaged too late. So Byer actually manages to come down and get a kill. And I think a lot of people are saying like, that's why Byer was the MVP was because of that early TP. Yeah. I'm not actually sure if the early TP, I feel like you have to TP because like otherwise your bot lane dies, right? Yeah. But I don't think it should normally be a good TP. It's like you you have to do it, but you're kind of like forced into doing it because I think what should happen is like they commit, the TP goes down and you disengage. But they took a really long time to disengage and so they end up dying on the way out. Also, I wasn't sure that a blind Renekton should even be able to TP bot because so Nara was picked into Renekton, which I believe is like more of a scaling counter pick. From what I understand, Renekton gets priority versus Nara early. And like that sort of makes sense that you want to take a NAR because if you're playing towards bot side, you know, maybe you need a more self-sufficient top laner. But your top lane counter pick doesn't get priority and so can't stop this TP and also can't punish the fact the TP was used. Because like TP got used bot, Byer just recalled and came back to a stacked wave. Yeah. So I'm not really, really sure. Anything. Yeah, exactly. You didn't lose anything for it. And I'm not really sure what to do about that because... You know, if you just pick a, a hard winning lane, but then you have like two side lanes that really need attention, like maybe that doesn't really work, right? Or maybe Renekton needs to be banned so that we have like a, a better self-sufficient top lane counter pick. Like I feel like the draft is, when you're running these like hyper aggressive early game comps, the draft is, I don't want to say like uh, hugely important, but can be very like, it's very hard to know what to pick. I yeah, feel like, right. like it's really, there's a lot of different ways you could go in terms of what you want. Um, and then, yeah, like the gameplay, the TP bot. And actually, the Babbit path, this was so weird. You know, Babbit, when I think of Babbit, I'm thinking like full clear into full clear. You know, that's the classic, kind of like Gooby. He's just catching strays. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry, Gooby. I didn't mean it that much. You're fine. Um, but yeah, he did like the Sedge. 
I think like went bot, based, went bot again, and like got spotted on something and then based and came bot again. So it was like the third time they came bot. And I think the PGG bot line probably just like weren't expecting Sedge to still be there at that point. They actually didn't kill a pink ward, I think, or they didn't hit the blast cone. And that's what actually allowed Sejuani to come in for the gank. Sejuani comes in, double kills the bot lane. And now you just have this like unkillable Sejuani and Renekton. And you've got a Caitlyn building Lethality from behind who just... I don't know. You hit said you'd do like 40 damage with an auto. And I felt like... Not even 40, probably. Yeah, like actually maybe not. I felt like at that minute, like I don't know when it was, like six minutes, the game already feels over. Yeah. Like the, the scaling advantage to the other side was so insane. It does feel like when you pick Draven in a comp like this where everything is sort of centered around that, as soon as as soon as soon he dies once with like a bunch of stacks, it's, it feels really hard to come back from that, especially when you're ADC... Is not really going to help you set up any kills either. You know, it's a fucking Caitlyn. <laughs> um, and yeah, they really just started getting just destroyed in lane. And when you're, you know, your winning lane or supposedly winning lane is not winning anymore, it's like, what do you even do? I mean, Dongy was doing pretty well in mid, but I think it's hard for him to sort of be able to facilitate everything by himself. And that sort of situation that felt like he was put into. Yeah, I think Dongy overall did, I mean, definitely had a good scoreline. And I think he mostly played well, but there was like one time where Akali was able to roam bot that I think was his mistake. So I think the problem was he ended up basing and TPing back without lost chapters. So when you're playing versus Akali, like she can't threaten the early game, which means like you should always have like a good first base. And ideally it is the chapter in a lane where you just like want to push over and over, right? I didn't actually check his runes. Like he has Spellbook. So you should either have you know, DMAT or Futures Market. Basically, either of those are going to like, you either get the chapter earlier, which helps you push, or you get the DMATs, which again helps you push. But what happened was he TPs back, Akali matches, and then suddenly, like three waves later, he was out of mana and was forced to base, which I don't think should happen in this matchup. And then Akali went bot and kind of, that was like the nail in the coffin. Like she went down, I think killed bot lane again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know, maybe Dongy, I think if he'd played a little bit better, could have avoided that. But I still think they would have lost. Like, I don't mm. think that... Actually, that that kind of that really did just seal yeah, the game. It did, it did. <laughs> I mean, I tried something, it didn't yeah. work. But I feel like I don't know. I, I feel like there's better games you can try this in. I you uh, can argue both I ways. Know. I think I big respect to PGG. Yeah. Like I'm I'm 100 down for trying it. And I think maybe if you optimize the draft better and your gameplay definitely has to be cleaner, like it might it might work, right? Because those those kind of comps, like when you're playing early game versus scaling, the game is going to be one sided no matter what pretty much, right? Like it's either Draven gets those kills and suddenly this game ends at like 18 minutes, right? Or the other way around, they die at four minutes and the game is just over. <laughs> it right? ends at 18 so, minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Larissa and welcome to our featured LCO Fight of the Week. We're looking at the Chiefs versus Direwolves in game one, day one of week two. At 34 minutes, the two teams are positioning themselves to fight over the Elder Drake. The fight is off to an interesting start as Poltron engages with the Sejuani ultimate onto Elidoric, while Biopanther, hidden in the brush, engages onto Kratos. Certainly are back to the scene of the crime. We jump right back into the action around this one. They manage to pop his guardian angel, and Chaz uses his Zonyas to avoid the damage coming in from Wukong and Gwyn. Kisei moves in to get a pick onto Decoy, and the fight is looking good for their team. But Praedith is now resurrected and starts auto-attacking Biopanther and the Chiefs. Zoranis on Cassante knocks Elidoric back with his all-out ultimate, eliminating the Chiefs' support. He then turns his attention to Raze. What do you need? Poltron, Poltron, can't be stopped. Poltron is now stuck between the members of the Chiefs and goes down fighting, leaving the Direwolves in a 3v2 situation. Chiefs are forced to recognize the strength of the Direwolves' top lane and retreat. Untouchable! He just can't be beaten right now. This Cassante is huge. Zoranis is massive. That's it for our featured LCO fight of the week. Sorry, Chiefs. Better luck next time. Yas Queen Slay. We've had a lot of banger matches this week. Let's have a look at the standings to see where our teams are looking. At first place, we have Direwolves, undefeated, 5 0. Pretty well played from them. Uh, second place, Tide, Chiefs, Esports Club, and Pentanet.gg, both 4 and 1, respectively. Coming in at fourth, Team Bliss, 3 2. Doing pretty well, I think. At fifth, to everyone's surprise, Mammoth, actually, 2 3. Ground Zero Gaming and Kanga Esports, both 1 and 4. And of course, last. And certainly least, Peace, sitting at zero played games total. That's impressive. That's pretty impressive. I, I mean, mean, that's happened before, that a team's forfeit 
more than like one game maybe or maybe two or something. Yeah. Peter out here setting records. <laughs> <laughs> it's the moments you've all been waiting for. But first, we have a quick question to ask our loyal Matchfix audience. We do, we do. So you guys know us, we've been running out of content ideas lately. So we're coming to you for some help. So we're going to be asking a question to everyone and that question for this week is going to be, who is the uncontested, undefeated, best League of Legends waifu and why? That is very important. Yeah, why is important. And this can be guys, gals, or non-binary pals. We're not, you know, we're not restricting this anything. But we do need the why and we'd like you to leave it either in a comment below the video or I believe we're making a Twitter post. Yes, Hopefully it will already be up. Yes, it's already it should up. Be up. Yep. So go and comment on that and we will read it out next week on the match fix. Yeah. Make sure to get your submissions in so you can... You know, Submission, eh? Interesting choice of words. Maybe we know what a Melg's going for already. Okay. Let's move on to the moments. <laughs> Let's move on to the moments. Straight off the bat on day one, we had Kitty giving us her best attempt at a pickup line. And to be fair, it was pretty good. Are you a VOD? Because I can review you for hours. Hold up. I think I've heard this one before. Best pickup line for League of Legends players. Um, are you a VOD? Because I can review you for hours. That was really cringe. 100% success rate. Rift or whatever. Wait, what? Can I need to write that one down for my uh, my dating apps? Valorant? Valorant. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Bliss went 3-0 this week, and why not felt like that gave him permission to get a little bit more unhinged? Unhinged isn't the word I'd use, but... Hey, how would you describe him? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it on here. Ah, fair enough. In the Mammoth Kanga game, we also had Rusty Backseat Gaming fighting his inner OCE demons. Is he trying to counter gank? Pops the sweeper. <laughs> Mayfun's not even here, he's just doing blue buff. Mayfun's clearing this entire time. Voice now using his HP as a tool to bait. And he's gone! And the hook was thrown when he left! Oh no. Oh no, he's gone back I in. I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I can't. Are you I can't, leaving? I can't. He's coming back in! I don't. Are you going? My brother in Christ. Oh, they know you're here now! Okay, flash punch ult! I tell you what, hey, it's a gank, it's a kill. That was sick. It worked out, I don't know what Rusty's complaining about. Did you see Voice's hair as well? I mean, I was watching a bit of uh, too much Max <laughs> <laughs> I did, man. People want to be us. That's how you know we're making it. Yeah. I think his name's Tim Wendell. Is that no pistols allowed in? Yeah. I told him, yeah, I'm five season challenger. Don't worry. But I unfortunately looked a bit too far up. Right. And uh, his head blinded me today. Yeah, Carbon actually um, sent me a response to, to Kitty's comment. Um, yeah. Now, of course, the LCO cast are very, very much renowned for their artistic talent, and this week was no exception. They definitely went above and beyond. And a reveal. <laughs> Mac, that's a moo moo. <laughs> it really is. We also, I got the unhappy face. Oh, I got the yellow crown as yeah, well. Got the eye color wrong. Can we get a quick zoom on the, the Skimmy's masterpiece? Look at that, guys. Please. He's firmly. Uh, woo wing. Uh, woo wing? Is that uh, the. Uh, woo wing. Is uh, woo wing. The There's no hands. <laughs> I'm a uh, wooing you right now. Uh, woo. <laughs> Angry uh, woo. On to some week three predictions. We got some got some spicy games ahead of us. Also, it'll be interesting to see if Peace play or not. I'm guessing not. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the real one. For yeah. Me. I just want to see if they show up. Predict. Peace playing or not? Oh, this is, this is the hardest one. Um, I'm going to say. I don't know, I think it's interesting that LCO have said they're going to play, but they have nothing on the GCD. And yeah. we were, we're recording this like, you know, with a few days until it starts again. So I'm going to say no. And also because I want to see them forfeit all their games. I think they also will not play because I think what's going to happen is their roster is going to get locked and then their mid lane is going to get banned and then peace <laughs> are going to get That would fined. be so funny. <laughs> yeah, oh my so God, I think I that's what's that. going to happen. But anyway, on to the games. Die Wolves versus PGG. You're normally wrong on these, but who have you got? PGG, I tried some stuff, it didn't work. Meanwhile, Die Wolves are undefeated. So, the other choice is obviously Die Wolves. So I'm going to pick PGG <laughs> because I know Dongy's not going to let me down. Okay, you're and I think that. Dong. I don't know. I think that it's it's so hard to say where these two teams sort of stack up against each other just because we haven't seen many games from them, right? Sure, PG lost to Chiefs and then Divals beat Chiefs. Whatever. Um, I think that PGG... I don't know. I think it'll be a bloody game either way, right? Because both teams seem to like playing aggressively. But I think 
PGG have shown maybe more like I feel like the peak that they've shown so far is better than the peak that Diawars have so, has shown so far. But again, it's very hard to say. I'm just huffing hopium at this point. I just would like to see Dongy win. Um, so yeah, PGG for me. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not really sure on this one. That's to be hard. honest. Yeah, I think PGG, while they're an early game team, they're a scaling organization. You know, they're, they're going to be better at the playoffs once they get all those extra scrims from other regions under their belts and stuff. I think at the moment, I'm not sure. If that Diwolves Chiefs game just hadn't happened, I'd just predict PGG and then that would be all there is to it. But now I'm thinking like Diwolves, they're looking pretty solid right now. Like there's definitely some inting going on and the games like aren't super clean, but I do think they kind of have like a game plan, which is like more than what most teams have this early in the split. So I think I'm gonna predict Diwolves on this one. But honestly, I'm I'm not very sold on my own prediction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a 50-50 it for is, me. It is. The next match is... Mammoth, Mammoth. versus Ground Zero. Yeah. This is the most exciting game of the week for me. This is... Of the, everything yeah. is on the line here. You know, stars aligned. This is Mammoth. <laughs> Can you kind of escape the, the bottom feeders for the first time in like, I don't know, since 2019 mm. or whenever it was? Or are you destined to just be at the bottom of the barrel? Ground Zero, look very lost i'm not really sure and mammoth they have at least shown that they can like play out the early game and if they get ahead like they they might be able to win off it whereas i feel like ground zero right now i'm not really sure what they really have going for them so i believe that my boys over there at mammoth i think they can get it done i think they're going to take out ground zero yeah i think the the most context we have behind this matchup is mammoth's game against kanga where you know they they were kind of set up to succeed by the enemy team. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, you know, they they stuck to what they knew, right? They had like a pretty easy to execute team comp, pretty clear win con, like way how to win the game. And they executed on that pretty well. Um, so I'm also going to protect Mammoth. Um, I do agree that Ground Zero haven't really, I don't know, like they haven't really done anything notable. Like I'm thinking back on the games, I don't really remember any time where I was like, okay, Ground Zero is looking pretty interesting. And I think, I don't know, I haven't really seen much from Dante and Bull Bulldog either, and they're kind of meant to be sort of centerpiece of that mm -hmm. lineup for me. Maybe I just haven't been looking close enough, but I do think that Mammoth seems better. Yeah. Yeah, better. I mean... <laughs> it has my predictions uh, for the power rankings, but mm. who, love, who doesn't love an underdog? That's true, that's true. I think it's, I mean, we just don't have that many games to go off. Like, obviously, we've never seen these teams play against each other. And also, it's just crazy how little time teams have now before things kind of start going to best of series. Like, obviously, it's due to the format change, but, but I'm just thinking back in, like, OPL, when it was just like, you, you play, like, 10 weeks before you played any best of series. That was a long time for it. Even if your team was really struggling at the start, you know, by week five, you know, you can turn that around, right? But now... If you're again, I guess the seeding doesn't matter too much, but you know, you're going to be hitting best of series and potentially being eliminated at like week four or something like that, right? So you don't have a lot of time to find your footing, and ground zero, they are running out of time, yeah. And it does feel like the way you prep for best of ones is definitely like very different how you prep for an actual like best of three or best of five series, and so they're going to have to like just fresh off of kind of being lost with what direction they want to take in the best of one, they got to jump into best of threes now. You gotta come up with a whole new game plan for that. It's just a lot and not a lot of time. And yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see how it turns out though. It's gonna be fun to watch. I think it'll be fun for the players as well to be able to play like a lot of a lot more sets of games. Well, well, well. Just like Peace Visa's applications, we are out of time. We'll catch you next week for your weekly fix. But you stole my outro.